Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. My name is Anton and today we're going to take a look at IL weaving. If you're not familiar with the technique, it's a meta programming technique that allows us to insert additional IL code into the artifact that we have produced. You have some kind of up DLL, it already contains some code, you want to insert more code into there. The technique is useful for achieving aspect oriented programming. If you're not familiar with aspect oriented programming, don't worry, we're not going to be dwelling into that. You perhaps may have heard of a tool like PostSharp. We're not going to be touching that either. And we're also not starting from complete scratch. We are going to be using a library called Cecil. And the point of this video is going to primarily to illustrate IL weaving, what it involves, what you can achieve with it, just how difficult it can be, and all of the things that you may have to potentially consider. So if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, leave a comment, you know what to do. I have a C-sharp course that is out, go ahead and check it out. With that, let's go ahead and get started. We have four projects, they're all very small. We have the application, where in the program CS we have a test class with a do method. The do method has nothing, and we are marking it up with a hello world attribute. The hello world attribute comes from the markers project over here, and this is meant to be a connector between the functions over here that perhaps we want to distribute across our application. So the something over here is going to contain an implementation of console write line hello world, and the hello world attribute is just a bridge between this method and this method, where the goal for this video is really to take the implementation inside this method and move it into this method. As a quick overview of what is going to be happening, we have two applications. So our app and our functions, these are going to produce DLLs and I'm just going to denote these by little d's, just like that. We then have our Weaver project, which is going to sit over here and consume both of the DLLs. Once the Weaver performs its logic, it's going to spit out a new DLL and we're going to replace our app DLL with the newly injected logic. So first of all, let's go ahead and produce the DLLs and then we're going to work on the Weaver. To produce the DLLs, I'm going to open up in a terminal. Let's close everything else. I'm going to run .NET build and I'm going to output this to dot .output and that should be good. I'll close down the terminal, open the one in functions, bring this up and output to .fn folder. With the two artifacts produced, we have the .fn folder over here and the output folder over here. Now we want our Weaver to consume the functions.dll and the app.dll. Let's come down to the Weaver. Let's open the program CS over here. And by the way, I haven't showed yet, but this Weaver is using mono.ccell and this is the library that is going to be doing the weaving. Let's close this off. First of all, let's remove the console write line and we'll create a couple of variables like app.dll which is going to be a string and be a path to our app DLL and then the FN DLL as well. I'm not going to be writing any smart logic here because the focus here really is what does weaving actually look like. So let's copy this path, slap it over there, copy this path and slap it over here. Once we have the paths to the DLLs, we want to grab the module definition and this is now coming from the CSL library. We're going to read the module and we'll read app DLL. We'll say that this is an app module and first of all let's actually just output all of the types that we have here so app module types uh, for each app module type let's go to console right line app module type and we'll grab the full name let's open this in the terminal run the application and here's what we see hopefully you can understand we see the test class coming from app.dll and if we run this against fn dll, we are going to see the something class, which is right over here. Again, the logic that I'm going to write, just heads up, it's going to be very basic. I'm not going to account for all the different use cases. We're going to go to the app module, we're going to go to the types, and we're going to grab the very first type where one of the methods, so any method, may contain a custom 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 attribute where the name and the name is contained in attribute type so the name is equal to if we go to hello world attribute grab the name place it over here this should be enough this is going to be the target type with the target method where we want to insert our logic so target method 
and just grab the very first method. Again, this is where I said that the logic that I'm gonna be writing is going to be very simple. So we're not accounting for any of the other scenarios. We just wanted to work for what we have. Let's copy this logic. I'll place it over here. And instead of app modules, we're now gonna go to the FN DLL. This is going to be the FN module. We will grab the type from the FN module. This is going to be source code type. And we'll replace the target type with the source method. Let's remove the for each loop over here and we've managed to find two methods of our interest. On the source method, we will be able to reach the body which contains all of the instructions. We want to take these instructions and move them along to the target method. On the target method, again, we have the body and we can get the IL processor. This is the thing that is going to interact with the IL code or the body of this method. So let's get this processor. We'll also take these instructions, slap them over here for each instruction that we have on the source method. So I'll just call this I, format the code. We'll take the processor and looking at some of the functions, we have functions like append, clear, create, emit, insert after. Some of these work with instructions. Emit will work with things like opcode. The opcode route, I've already been down this route. When I've been working on my automapper videos, it is not a nice interface to work with. So I'm just gonna hack away and work with the instructions. Otherwise, if you would like to know how you would work with the IL code, you would need an IL viewer that looks something like this. And you would see, okay, this is a no op code. We have LD STR, so load string. Then we want to call this method the no op and return. And this is again, non-optimized version. If we then take a look at test, here we have two instructions. So no op and return. So perhaps we want to grab this last instruction and in between the no op instruction and the return instruction, insert the instructions that are again in this similar pattern between the no op and the red. Or maybe actually I can just clear the whole thing and transfer the instructions, right? So let's go to processor, clear, then go to this processor and just use append the instruction. And this is pretty much it. Now we want to go to the app module not the DLL app module, we'll use write and we're going to write to the same location where we have read it from. So backing out to the dot output and then slash app dot DLL. Now opening up the terminal, we have the weaver, let's run it and we should see an exception. And the exception goes something like this, that system.console is declared in another module. If I place a breakpoint over here and let's regenerate the output because the output has exploded next time we run it it is essentially corrupted at this point so we will have to regenerate it come back over here and instead of running it from the terminal we're going to run it from the debugger and the debugger actually runs it from the bin folder so the relative path doesn't really work here but what i want to bring your attention to is the app module over here if we take a look at the assembly references, it has only two references, system.runtime and markers. If we take a look at the FN module, assembly references and results, we will see that system.console is present here. So our function module is actually capable of using the console and the functions within the console class, whereas our app module isn't. I've already tried this where I tried to essentially grab this assembly reference from this list and just pass it along and I thought I was a hacker, but that actually didn't work. So I had to dig about and essentially what I managed to do is, again, I went to all of the types over here. I said, let's take a look at what the instructions actually look like. We'll take a look at something, scroll down to the methods, take a look at here, all of the methods. We have the do function, do function has a body and the body has instructions. And then one of the instructions has even more information where I can determine what the operand is, method reference, and then this also has the name. So this foreign thing that I'm trying to invoke that is not present in my module, there is an actual thing that I can grab it by and I can filter it by, by this thing. So let's grab this name for the operand and inside the for each loop, we're gonna check if this instruction operand is a simple object, if this is an actual method reference with the full 
name and I'm not getting intelligence because I should have placed F here. So full name that looks something like this. This is going to be an MF. Once we're in the possession of this motherfucker, we can go to the app module and import reference and pass the MF into here. All the relevant stuff is going to be imported into this module that we're transferring things into and out comes the imported method reference rather than the method reference from a different module. So it's important that we take this newly important method reference and reassign it to the operand over here. Reformat the code. Uh, let me stop the debugger because we essentially found out all of the information that we wanted to. Let's open up the terminal. I will rebuild. We are going to rerun the weaver. The weaver now has succeeded. I'm going to open up .output again. I'm going to run .net with app.dll. And this time we're going to see hello world being printed to the console. And actually this time there wasn't a previous time. So let me rebuild the original app. I'm going to rerun .net app DLL. And the original build doesn't include the instructions for printing hello world. Again, if I run the weaver, it is going to edit the app.dll. And then once I run this again, hello world is printed because we have changed the underlying instruction set. And this will be it for this video. Hopefully you've enjoyed it and you have a better feel for what IL weaving looks like. Basically a complete clusterfuck. If you ever need aspect oriented programming, you better choose a different programming language. C sharp, I would say is not built for this. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. If you would like the source code for this video as well as my other videos, please come support me on Patreon. I will really appreciate it. And a very big and special thank you goes out to all of my current Patreon supporters. You helped me bring this work. As always, thank you for watching. Have a good day.